Hello everyone and welcome to the first of many uh, screencast lectures for computational tools in chemical engineering CME 220. Uh, I am your professor Dr. Tom Jubla and hopefully you will find this format to be more conducive to learning how to use the computers for your classwork. Um, this is actually a class that is fully supportive of your other disciplines. It's not an end in itself, it's actually a means to make all your other classwork that much easier. And so my hope is that by working through what we'll talk about in uh, this semester, you'll be able to learn, um, uh, you'll be able to do your homework and all your other classes uh, that much better. And so the three software packages we're going to talk about is in this semester is uh, Excel, MATLAB, and Aspen. Uh, and we're going to start in the first month or so uh, really focusing in on Excel. Um, so let's get started. Uh, Excel is nothing other than a spreadsheet software. It's probably, um, and uh, these spreadsheet softwares originally started as a financial tool by an easy way to create ledgers to do simple calculations uh, ad nauseum and, and as a recording of, of data. Uh, it's really uh, the versatility and what they can do is really exploded since then and, and they are a great resource uh, for doing a lot of different homework types. Um, and so to, for many of you, you may already know what um, Excel and spreadsheeting is, but just to make sure that we're all on the same page, I want to kind of give a quick vocab lesson and an interface exposure and how this works. So to start off with, uh, this is Excel. This is the worksheet that you're in They're called worksheets. You could have more than one worksheet um, by just adding in uh, and each sheet can be uh, contained in a single Excel book, so to speak. Um, each worksheet is made of an, uh, many different cells, and a cell, you'll notice, is addressed by a letter and a number. And so each cell you're at, you can have, um, well, we'll have a very unique address, and the cell, uh, an Excel will use that address to reference um, cells, and we'll talk about in a little bit later. But besides selecting a single cell, you can actually, within Excel, select a whole area. That's just called the selection. And you'll notice in the selections, the uh, space that is white is called the active cell. And the reason why it's called the active cell is because anything you start entering into the, uh, into the cell will happen at that space. So if I start to type in letter, uh, text, you'll see it goes into that space. Now, I'll delete that. Now, the advantage here of Excel is speed, uh, being able to create tables, creating data as rapid as possible, as efficiently as possible, and uh, in a uh, uh, clean way. And using an active selection is a great way to set up a very simple table. So let me start with by selecting a certain area, and I'm going to create a table of, of distances and speeds to create and calculate um, a miles per hour average speed for this, or distances in time. So, to start off with, I am going to create a uh, first column. I'm going to call distance traveled. We'll just call it distance. I'm going to use another cell to give it a unit, a measure. And now, we're just going to enter in values that we want to do. Now, you'll notice, as soon as I was at the bottom of the selection and I hit entered, as I go through this table selection, I'm just going right down the list of uh, what's happening there. And then hitting enter will always move the active cell to the next reference. If, however, I hold down the shift key, which you can't see, but holding down the shift key and then hit enter, it'll go back up. So this is a great way to actually move through the active selection and create a table. If I wanted to go instead of up and down, the left and right, I can just use tab. And you'll see tab does the same thing, just moves in the opposite, in, in the left to right direction. Shift tab will go back the other way. So I can now create another uh, a column. We'll call this time. And we'll give this in hours. And I am just going to create random time. Um, one, one, two, three, two, however you have it. So we just created a column of distance and a column of time. Now, what if I wanted to create an average speed? Well, we can do this in miles per hour. Oops, miles per hour. Now, to do this, I just need to enter in an equation, a formula within uh, Excel. And this is really where the rubber hits the road. I can actually enter in a formula by hitting the equals key. And whatever I type in here, 
um, using uh, the standard uh, equation format, it, uh, remember it's going to use the uh, parentheses first uh, notation of, of math, is going to reference this equation. Now I can, by moving my arrow keys, move along and select the value that I want to manipulate. So this first one I can say is D9. I can divide it by the time to give us a distance. I can do that over and over again, divide by this, give that distance. And you'll notice within the cell, the nice thing about Excel is it color codes the references so you can see right away how the equations are being done. And as you've seen before, these references are indeed the address I was mentioning before, this D9 column position that's being calculated. Now, I could go in one by one and enter all these cells in, but that's somewhat futile and doesn't really show the power. The power of Excel is doing repeated actions very easily. And I can do this by either copying, I'll just use Control C, and I can select the entire area that I want to paste to and Control V, and voila, we've uh, created our whole table. Alternatively, and note, one of the important things in Excel, two things I'm going to explain. Uh, if you ever get locked into something, hit escape. Escape is usually your best key out of any uh, problem if there's an uh, issue in Excel. Next thing is making sure you do the undo if you wanted to uh, undo a, a format. So uh, I can undo that. Now, alternatively, besides simply copying and pasting, I could actually also select this entire range and then hit Control D. And what that does is it'll copy the top row of whatever selection is in this active cell and move it all the way down uh, through the selection. Just another way to uh, do values fast. And finally, the other way we can copy and paste things for us is actually by looking at this uh, active cell selection and looking at this bottom right corner. You'll notice this little uh, uh, square becomes a plus symbol. If I click that and drag down, it will actually then fill in the row a column with uh, with uh, just copying that format all the way down. This is just a fill a format, fill a series. One of the important things here in Excel, and I'll point out this, is this left corner option. It has lots of options to you uh, that can be done. If you right click it and click and drag, you'll get a bunch of options you can do. You can copy the cell, you can fill the formatting only, fill with formatting. There are a lot of flexibility in Excel that you have uh, uh, to copy and paste things. But one other thing to note in Excel that you should pay attention to is the symbol of the cursor that exists. You'll notice over it, if I uh, most of the time you see this nice uh, or white plus symbol, that's uh, the normal symbol of Excel within the spreadsheet. But if I move over here when you get the arrows, on the edge or border of the selection, I can click that and drag it and now I'll move that cell somewhere else. Uh, alternatively, I can uh, 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 click here and copy and paste this way and it will repeat the function and format uh, in that direction as well. And I can get rid of it by simply going back the other way and it deletes or uh, re, uh, uh, removes what I had just uh, done. So all of these are options within Excel and are uh, uh, to control. Now one of the things you'll notice though is this table is still not the prettiest it could be and not the probably the most uh, uh, available, uh, best available format. Well we can do some quick formatting to make this a little bit better for us. Some of the tricks you can learn is you'll notice in this column here average speed bleeds over into this next column. If I was to create a new column here average speed now gets hidden. So if I want to show this full text, I can actually go up here in the column, select this column, and you'll notice on the same thing here on the edge of the column, you have these arrows that move left and right. And this just lets you select the width of the column that gets displayed. In addition, I could just double click that column, that edge, and it'll widen it to the smallest possible uh, dimension so that all the text is uh, visible in that column. And you can do that here. It'll shrink it down to um, as a way of formatting this column. <coughs> In addition, I can um, select uh, th this area and say make it uh, center the uh, center the uh, uh, row for us. 
<clears throat> you have a whole bunch of options up here in terms of formatting that's available to us as well. So for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and say bold this text so we have something clean and clear. And I'll even underline the line so that we get a nice um, uh, column in this regard. And then finally, you'll notice uh, in these uh, numbers, one of the things to notice is how these numbers are formatted. That's a little bit differently. Excel defaults to putting all values uh, right justified. So it's on the right hand side of the column and not left hand side. Text defaults, I'll just put an A in there for demonstration, to left hand side. So it's a good click trick uh, check to see if a column is entered in as a text value or a number value. Um, for most purposes, uh, 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 except, uh, except for logical conditions, most text, uh, most formula are going to require it to be a number format uh, reference, otherwise you'll get some error messages. And so you'll see that there. And one other thing you'll notice on this, the default numbers, is Excel will oftentimes give a set of significant figures or a number of uh, digits well beyond what we would consider significant figures. So in this case, we can actually change the formatting and, and the presentation of Excel's uh, numbers by selecting the range, clicking, right-clicking that range, and going to Format Cells. And by going to Format Cells, we'll get this nice little drop box or uh, pop-up box. And you can see here all the different categories of formats you can do. You can change the alignment. You can change the font, border, the color of the fill. Um, you can even lock the cells if you wanted. Um, but what we want to do is change the number format. And you'll see you have lots of different options here. You can change the number. In this case, number gives us a chance to set uh, the number of decimal places that gets used. Uh, we can even have it use commas if we wanted to. Uh, and show how we're going to choose our uh, neg negative symbols. If we want negatives to be in red or parentheses, uh, like in accounting, or in this case, negative, just uh, normal negative numbers. Um, but we also have the ability to do currency, uh, counting, and so forth. So there's a lot of uh, uh, power, um, uh, text options or uh, format options that we would want. So for our purposes, we'll just do uh, one decimal point, present it that way, and we will also center this data set, and I'll go ahead and create a border, and now we have a table. And that is, in a nutshell, the way we can start with uh, looking at Excel and doing some initial formatting. Um, I think that's where we end this first uh, screencast. The following ones will go through different types of uh, formula and some more power in setting up the uh, formula conditions. But thank you for your time.